I taught my kids about democracy by having them vote on our pizza choice. I then chose the pizza because I'm the one with the money. Today, I'm going to recap a 2008 action thriller film called Street Kings. The movie opens with the introduction of Tom Ludlow, an attractive detective. While he's competent, he doesn't always adhere to the rules, making him a rugged character. Due to his fearless nature, he's frequently selected for undercover operations. One day, he's tasked with trapping two South Korean gangsters involved in illicit arms dealing. Posing as an arms dealer, Tom brings them a different set of weapons than they had requested. This angers them and matters escalate when Tom makes a derogatory comment about their eyes, leading them to believe he's prejudiced. Infuriated, the gangsters assault him. However, in a twist, it's revealed that Tom allowed the beating deliberately. He strategizes this so he can retaliate later, making it appear as self-defense, thus justifying any lethal action he might take. Once he feels he's gathered enough evidence of them attacking him, Tom heads to the gangster's lair, where he confronts and kills them all in a fierce battle. After the showdown, he takes a moment to relax with a drink, and then manipulates the crime scene to mimic a massive gunfight. While inspecting the premises, Tom discovers two South Korean women who had been imprisoned by the gangsters. Realizing they're in the country without proper documentation, he compassionately releases them. Shortly after, Captain Jack, Tom's stern supervisor, arrives. Tensions flare as Tom's fellow officers criticize his reckless methods. Just as a confrontation seems imminent, Captain Jack intervenes. To everyone's surprise, he commends Tom. However, when he gets close, he detects the scent of alcohol on Tom, immediately instructing him to seek medical attention before legal authorities arrive, highlighting the potential damage to his reputation if found inebriated. As Tom waits, his former close friend, Washington, approaches. Their relationship had been strained due to Tom's aggressive tactics. Washington expresses his disapproval of Tom's decision to kill the gangsters, believing they should have been tried in court. The following day, Tom made his way to the hospital, hoping to evade the media's prying eyes. While receiving treatment, Captain James, a member of the provost team that oversees potentially corrupt officers, approached him. Handing Tom his business card, James expressed hopes for collaboration, voicing suspicions about individuals in Tom's department, notably Jack. After James's departure, Grace, a nurse attending to Tom, revealed herself as his girlfriend. Seizing the private moment, the two shared an intimate connection within the hospital room. Upon Tom's discharge, he faced inquiries from the provost team concerning his aggressive methods. However, Tom managed to provide a satisfactory explanation for his actions. The subsequent day, Tom attended a celebratory gathering in honor of Jack's recent promotion. Amidst the revelry, Tom discreetly informed Jack and other attendees of James's watchful eyes, suspecting internal leaks. Jack, quick to point fingers, accused Washington of betraying the department, alleging that a resentful Washington, previously removed from their unit, sought vengeance. Consumed with the urge to confront Washington, Tom had to be restrained by his peers. Days later, Tom decided to tail Washington, contemplating intimidation. Yet, an unforeseen incident at a convenience store derailed his plans. Tom stumbled upon two armed burglars, causing him to reassess his intentions. Choosing to support Washington, despite their strained relationship, Tom intervened. Initially, Washington mistook Tom's approach as hostile, leading to a brief scuffle. Their quarrel was interrupted by the burglar's chaotic gunfire, during which Tom, attempting to retaliate, accidentally shot Washington in the shoulder. The confrontation culminated tragically with the burglars killing Washington. To Tom's dismay, the store's surveillance captured his altercation with Washington, making the footage incriminating evidence. Recognizing the peril, Jack, ever loyal, urged Tom to secure the recording before James or any legal entity could access it. Swiftly acting on Jack's advice, Tom retrieved the tape just in time. In the aftermath, Jack deemed it best to reassign Tom, placing him in a department responsible for addressing public grievances. There, Tom found himself inundated daily with a myriad of complaints, ranging from mundane to utterly baffling. One day, James sought out Tom to discuss the peculiar circumstances surrounding Washington's death. 
He referenced Tom's report, which highlighted the presence of only two robbers at the convenience store. However, the forensic team discovered three distinct bullet types in Washington's body, one of which was confirmed to be from Tom's firearm. James was eager to examine the surveillance footage Tom had taken, suspecting potential involvement of Tom and his colleagues in the tragic event. Concerned about the escalating situation, Tom confided in Jack about James' suspicions. In response, an infuriated Jack confronted James in his office, angered by the insinuations against his team. There, James admitted his distrust for Jack and even alluded to Jack's manipulative strategies for career advancement, particularly using his team, including Tom, to ascend to a commander position. After Washington's post-mortem examination was complete, a funeral service was held. Tom, along with his team, attended to pay their respects. During the ceremony, Tom observed Washington's grieving wife, Linda. Approaching her out of concern, Tom was met with Linda's clear reluctance to engage in conversation. Post-funeral, Tom crossed paths with Detective Paul, who was now spearheading the Washington investigation. Unexpectedly, Paul disclosed that he had been pressured by Jack to obscure details linking Tom to the convenience store episode, a revelation that frustrated Paul. Regardless, Tom conveyed his wish to assist in the probe, a proposition that Paul promptly declined. Tom learned from Paul about potential suspects, Vermont and Coates, and relayed this to his team, urging their arrest. Yet the majority, notably Richard, Jack's right-hand man, expressed hesitance. Feeling the weight of the circumstances, Tom decided to visit Jack personally to discuss Vermont and Coates. At Jack's residence, Tom voiced his unwavering resolve to apprehend those behind Washington's demise, emphasizing the depth of his bond with Washington. However, Jack vetoed the idea, fearing James's potential discovery of their actions. The next day, Paul approached Tom for a confidential discussion. Shockingly, he unveiled allegations against Washington, linking him to illicit endeavor such as drug operations. Furthermore, connections were drawn between Washington and the suspects, Vermont and Coates. Their partnership apparently took a wrong turn, culminating in Washington's untimely death. Paul also admitted that James had previously intimidated him with threats of unveiling Tom's misconduct. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, Tom decided to cooperate with Paul. As evening approached, Tom and Paul joined forces, initiating their investigation by determining the most recent whereabouts of Vermont and Coates. While on their investigation, Tom and Paul ran into a member of a Mexican gang named Quicks. Unexpectedly, Quicks took off, instantly making them suspicious. They pursued him, and Tom was able to catch Quicks, entangling him in some barbed wire. Utilizing this advantage, Tom pressed Quicks for information. Eventually, Quicks revealed someone associated with Vermont and Coates, a man named Grill. Without delay, Tom and Paul made their way to Grill's residence. Upon arrival, Tom pointed his weapon at Grill, subjecting him to severe intimidation. The sight of Tom's aggressive behavior startled Paul. Using his threatening demeanor, Tom compelled Grill to disclose the location of Vermont and Coates. Having extracted the necessary information, Tom decided to keep Grill detained temporarily. The next day, Tom reached out to Linda once more, offering her assurances regarding the apprehension of those responsible for Washington's demise. He also inquired about some money linked to Washington, which the police believed might have illegal origins. Linda clarified that the funds were from the sale of her property and voiced her concerns that Washington might have been set up to divert attention from corrupt practices within the police force. Interestingly, she also highlighted Washington's close ties with James. Back at his workplace, Tom was approached by Richard, who presented evidence pertinent to Washington's case. A bullet extracted from Washington's body that matched Tom's gun. However, Richard conveyed to Tom that he was no longer under suspicion. Subsequently, Tom received a call from Grill, introducing a new name into the mix, Winston, a gangster familiar with Vermont and Coates' location. Eager to move forward, Tom, with Paul in tow, arranged a rendezvous with Winston. Winston provided them with an address where Fremont and Coates were allegedly hiding. Regrettably, upon their arrival, they didn't find Fremont or Coates. Instead, they stumbled upon multiple bloodstains and a peculiar foul smell. 
To their horror, they found Fremont and Coates already dead and buried in the property's yard. This discovery prompted Tom to question the narrative. He hypothesized that the real perpetrator behind Washington's murder was still at large and might have killed Fremont and Coates to cover their tracks. Determined to unravel this mystery, Tom resolved to enlist Winston's assistance once more. Later that night, Paul reached out to Tom, informing him that Winston had pinpointed two gangsters possibly responsible for Washington's murder. Before pursuing this lead, Tom felt the need to see Linda and offer an apology for his past behavior. He played the CCTV footage from the mini-market to clarify the events that took place. Tom assured Linda of his determination to bring those responsible for Washington's death to justice. He then confided in Linda about the loss of his own wife, expressing empathy for her grief. Following this emotional exchange, Tom prepared to confront the gangsters indicated by Winston. While he intended to face them solo, Paul's persistence led Tom to accept his company. Just as they were departing, James intervened, revealing an intention to arrest Tom that very night. Nevertheless, James saw the value in Tom's aggressive tactics in apprehending the gangsters and eventually let him proceed. In a twist of events, the individual Winston had pointed them to, named either Ibro or Jude, was approached by Tom who pretended to be interested in a drug deal. However, Jude wasn't easily deceived and recognized Tom's true intentions related to avenging Washington. To Tom and Paul's astonishment, Ibro and Jude were revealed to be corrupt policemen. An ensuing conflict resulted in Winston's death and a grievous gunshot wound to Paul's neck. Although Tom managed to neutralize the corrupt officers, he couldn't save Paul from his injuries. In pain and in need of medical attention, Tom sought out Grace. While at her place and watching the news about the recent events, he started suspecting a setup. Out of concern, he advised Grace to keep her distance for her safety. Suddenly, Tom's associate, Santos and Dom, barged into Grace's residence and detained Tom, dragging him into a vehicle. As they drove, a shocking revelation unfolded. The mastermind behind Washington's murder was none other than Captain Jack. Jack's involvement extended to a drug ring in collaboration with Ibro and Jude. However, Jack's operations were threatened when Tom began probing into Washington's death, prompting him to plot against Tom. Using a concealed wire, Tom managed to free himself from the handcuffs. In a desperate move, he surprised Dom, who was at the wheel, causing the car to collide with another vehicle. Unfortunately, Tom lost consciousness. When he awoke, he found himself at the same location where Fremont and Coates had been buried. Bound and in peril, he nevertheless summoned the strength to hit Don over the head with a shovel and neutralize Santos with a well-placed gunshot. Elsewhere, Richard was inflicting harm upon Linda following Jack's directive to retrieve the CCTV footage Tom possessed. Just in time, Tom reached Linda's residence, subdued Richard, and confined him in the trunk of a car. The following day, a confrontation ensued between Tom and Jack at Jack's residence. Tom, feeling betrayed, demanded to know why Jack had set him up, especially since he'd always viewed Jack as a confidant, if not family. The heated exchange culminated in Jack suggesting they join forces to bury the current cases. However, Tom, having been deceived one too many times, lashed out. Amidst the chaos, Tom succeeded in restraining Jack and drew a gun on him, poised to deliver the final blow. But Jack had one last revelation. He'd amassed a fortune in money, drugs, and incriminating information about various officials, all stashed within his home's walls. Offering Tom a share, he pitched a new beginning for them both. But Tom, committed to integrity and redemption, made a fateful decision and ended Jack's life. In the aftermath, Tom reached out to James, asking him to gather the evidence of Jack's transgressions. James, it seems, had intentionally allowed Tom to deal with his corrupt colleagues, sparing James from having to take violent action against his own. As a token of appreciation, James chose not to arrest Tom. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.